had a guy on uh, Jamie Metzl yesterday, a scientist who scared the shit out of me, talking about China. He's talking about China. We were talking about China amassing n naval power, oh. China's taking over tech companies yep. and how, how huge they're getting and how much influence they have over their people as opposed to the way we do it. It's well, he's not wrong. No. He's not, yeah, I can't spot the lie in, in what, what you just said. But, uh, I mean, look, there's, I mean, there's so much we, we, can, we can talk about. But if you think about it, just in the past handful of months um there was this solar winds hack right by the russians so the russians go in they hack into a company called solar winds that is an it management software company that happens to be uh, fairly deep into government organizations agencies treasury and, and a variety of others throughout the u.s government and they're also into parts of the intel community defense department uh, in a lot of commercial sectors. So anyway, the Russians figure this out. Now, around about December or January, uh, Microsoft, you know, identified this as a problem. And and I think it was the head of Microsoft said, this looks like the most sophisticated attack we've ever seen. So this is December, January timeframe. And they're still trying to figure out the depth of this hack by Russians. At the same time, and going back months and months and months and months before, the Chinese had been engaged in a more sophisticated attack that while everyone is focused on what's going on and so fully aware that we got problems, right, from, from nation states out there who don't like us, everybody's talking about solar winds, and now it's, you know, they've just now released information about the Chinese attack against uh, Microsoft Exchange servers uh, running the Exchange email systems. And this thing is uh, enormous. And so the Chinese, yeah, I mean, we've been so focused for four years on the Russians, you know, and they're, you know, they, they're out there to cause us all sorts of problems. So we should be focused on them. But, but it's China that's the biggest problem. And so this guy is absolutely right. Jamie's right. It was terrifying. Yeah. Listen to what he was talking about, the way he was explaining how they, you know, they have this plan. With, I think he said 2049 to be the, the global superpower of the world and mm -hmm. essentially be take the place of what America used to be Yeah, they, do it their way. And they do it their way, which means we're going to bypass all the costs and the heavy lift of research and development over the years, and we're just going to steal everything. Yeah. And they've been doing it for decades. So people think, oh, China, it's a problem. It's a pro We've talked about this before. Yeah. You know, this idea that perhaps this is just something relatively new or it's popped up during the previous administration of Trump. And honest to God's truth is it's been going on for decades. And they decided that that's how they're going to get to the top of the food chain is by stealing shit because it's a lot easier to hoover up everything and then reverse engineer it. Uh, and the technology has made it even easier, right? It used to be old school. They'd go out and recruit somebody. They'd find some Chinese American working for a company here in the States. They'd appeal to sort of, you know, you got to help the motherland and, and they would. And that was the old school way of doing it. But, you know, cyber theft, is it's, it's incredible what they're able to do and this latest attack while well, they they're still trying to sort out the mess right so when they do this so if they get into this email server mm. they, 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 do they, are they targeting anything specific is there specific companies are they just like throwing a net out there and seeing what they catch yes is the answer to uh, both of those mm. it's it looks like what happened here was that uh, their their initial point of attack or the initial focus was uh, intelligence, right? So then it branched out and it branched out very, very quickly, right? To hit everything, small companies, medium-sized companies. And that's kind of the MO for the, the Chinese, the Chinese regime, right? The, uh, and the, their intel operations, uh, they've got this long vision and they've also got the resources and they've got the desire to hoover up everything and then sort it out later. We take, as, as, as a country, we take a very sort of targeted approach, right? We say, okay, this is a piece of information that's a priority tasking for the U.S., for our national security. We're going to go out. We're going to figure out who has access to it. We're going to develop a very sort of surgical strike to figure out how do we get to somebody who's got this piece of information. That's typically how uh, we or some of our allies would operate. The Russians, the Chinese have always had a different approach. I mean, the Russians is less elegant. The Russians are just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks, right? But the Chinese, 
they've got this long view and they've also got this ability and they'll so in this particular attack that they're still trying to assess um that was perpetrated by you know uh, chinese state-sponsored hackers based in china uh they uh they're just going to take everything and then they'll sift through it they'll figure out what they got a lot of it's going to be just you know chafe not not of interest but they're going to find a lot of gold in there too and they're willing to do that because they've got the patience to do it. They'll they'll develop a target. They'll develop a, a potential recruit for years and years and years. Or they'll they'll infiltrate um, a society or an organization, right? I, they'll put a student out here who's actually working for the PLA for their intel operations, and they'll put him out as an undergrad. And then they'll go to school, and they'll get good grades, and they'll go to a, a grad school, and they'll get a job, and they'll get another job, and then 30 years down the line, it may pay off. But they're willing to make that investment. So, uh, so we should be scared. Well, <laughs> we shouldn't be scared, but we should. Yeah, uh, we. I, I don't think we should be scared, but I think what we should be is is pragmatic and understand why. Uh, for instance, I mean, there was a lot of you know hue and cry over the past four years. I can't believe I just said hue and cry. I don't even oh, know what that means. I don't know. It's, just like, hue, it's old timey. Is it? Yeah. Oh hue by golly! <laughs> Look at me. Cry? It's like the cat's pajamas. Um, <laughs> it's uh, so you know four years of Trump and sort of his antagonistic relationship with China, and people were all wringing their hands in Washington D.C. You know, sort of the the, the think tankers and the traditional pundits and the diplomats of 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 uh, of, of uh, the u.s you know the long-term people they're oh my god we've got this adversarial relationship with china well you know what we better right so that's not a bad thing so i'm hoping the current administration maintains to some degree and we'll see what happens they still haven't responded to the solar winds to the russian attack right and they're talking about it now they're saying they're gonna they're gonna engage in several clandestine uh retaliatory acts well it's not that clandestine because they've announced that they're going to do it. Um, and so, uh, you know, but but I'm hoping that they will take serious action uh, uh, against the, the SolarWinds Russian Act. But they've got to, with China, they've, they've got to maintain this uh, posture. We've got to uh, make it clear and understood to the Chinese regime that we're not going to put up with this shit. They're going to keep doing it, but we got to make it painful for them. So how do you make it painful? Well, you know, it's the old word sanctions. You got to go with the sanctions because there's not much else. Trade wars, you know, I know everybody hates a trade war. Not everybody, but um, you've, you, you've, you've got to find a way because the problem with, with cyber uh, shenanigans is that there's no real clear definition, right? We know if, we, if, if a country fires a ballistic missile off, uh, you know, we know what the retali or retaliatory act is. We know what an appropriate response is. In cyberspace, when you're talking about warfare, coming up with a definition is very difficult and hasn't been done yet. We've got Cyber Command, right? And we're still trying to sort out what are appropriate responses because they can escalate quickly, right? Next thing you know, they could shut down our infrastructure, right? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, yeah. supposedly what they did in India. Mm -hmm. So if you could explain that to people, they, they shut down the power grid in India, allegedly. They said they didn't do it. But apparently there was some sort of a warning about the power going out, right? Yeah. Um, they've done it. Uh, I mean, the Russians did it famously in Ukraine, right? I mean, not that long ago. And um, China's ability to interfere uh, in uh, infrastructure here in the U.S. or in India or uh, with our allies is because for years now they've been probing. There's been testing going on. You know, we, we, we talk about um, it's a good example. We talk about how um, in the U.S. we have three grids, and I think people were, were stunned to find out that Texas has its own power grid. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, but it's not so much. People were like, oh, my God, look at Texas. They're terrible because, you know, they wanted to make it a political thing. right? Yeah. They wanted to make it sound like the, the reason why it's so terrible is because it's Republicans and they've got they want their own independence. Well, no, all three grids are fucked, right? The East and the West and the, and, and the Texas grids are all cobbled together over the years. So it's a very sort of it's like a, a patchwork quilt and they were never built to withstand uh, physical attacks. I mean, you can drive by any substation, right? You could get close enough to pee on it. And there's they, they, they certainly were never designed to, to withstand a cyber attack. So over the years, what goes on is essentially a mapping exercise. Right? 
where whether it's the Russians, whether it's the Chinese, whether it's the North Koreans using Chinese capabilities, whether it's the Iranians, whomever, they're in there probing and trying to understand the weaknesses and they're drawing up a map. Now, the reason why they're doing that is to have a game plan, right? And I guarantee you, sitting on the desk somewhere, not too far from, you know, Xi's office, is a playbook that says, if this thing escalates, here's what we're going to do. And if you think that like, it was bad in Texas, you know, a couple of weeks ago when, you know, the power was out, and it was bad, but think about that lasting for eight, 10, 12 weeks around the country, right? Power grid shut down, what happens? You can't transport shit, right? You can't get cash. Fuel doesn't get to, to the gas stations. Food doesn't get to the stores. Uh, there's, you know, depending on the time of year, heat issues, obviously, water supplies. Uh, and that's where the next big battle is going to be fought, right? They're going to bring it to the homeland. And we will do the same thing, right? It's not like we're not doing it because people always say when I say something like that, well, the U.S. does it too. I think, well, fuck yeah, the U.S. does it. We better. We better hope we're, 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 we're prepared. Does that, does that frust you, fr frustrate you when people say that? Mm. Well, the U.S. does it too. Yeah, it does in a sense because and this is where I think, um, you know, that it, now personal opinion comes into it. Look, I spent most of my, my adult life overseas and... I like to think that I've got a fairly pragmatic view on things. I do admit that I, you know, obviously, look, I, I look at the U.S. and I like to think, and I have seen on occasions, we, we do a lot of things for, for the right reason. Sometimes we don't do it properly, right? We, we make mistakes. Of course we make mistakes. Uh, but we try to self-correct. I guarantee you, if we're talking about the major powers out there, if we're talking about China and us, if we're talking about the Chinese regime, I'm talking about obviously, if we're talking about uh, the Russians, the Iranians, the North Koreans, we better hope that we stay up there, right? And are able to uh, exert influence and leverage and control the top, right? Because if it's, if it's, <laughs> I, and again, I, maybe I'm wrong here, but the Chinese don't view anything in an altruistic manner, the Chinese regime, right? It's all about self-interest. and. Sometimes, I'll tell you what's frustrating, sometimes is we seem to be the only country out there that apologizes, right, for that sort of thing. And so when we act in our own best interest, then we go, well, we're really sorry about that. We're, you know, we're kind of acting in our own best interest. Well, every other nation does it, and they don't give a f Yeah, but shouldn't we be the moral high ground for the world? I think we should. I think it's nice if we do all the same shit they do, we say, mm. sorry. Yes. Yeah. As long as we yeah. do all the same shit. I guess shit. it doesn't cost anything to say sorry. It's not a bad yeah. thing. It's, like it's not a bad thing. We're setting no. a tone. Yeah, I guess that's true. As long as we're as long as we're also then at the same time acting in our own best interest. Yeah. Because we have to be again, we have to be pragmatic. If we think that somehow, you know, to 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 act as if China's not the, the you know, the the number one polluter out there is yeah. insane. Yeah, right? that's that's where it gets weird. Right? Yeah, it does get it gets a, a little weird. Giant difference between yeah. the amount of Particulates, the amount of pollution, the amount of CO2. You know, um, I think they've they've tried hard to mitigate that over the last few years, in particular. But you remember when they had the Beijing Olympics? Yes. And they had to shut everything down because the air quality was so bad yeah. that the athletes, you know, would it would actually be dangerous for the athletes to to perform and to compete.